Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. In this lesson, we're just getting our scene set up, ready for testing the dynamic weather script. Now, we covered some of this in the last episode, but I thought it would be good to do a single lesson. Now, as you can see, I've created a very basic scene. I've created an island, added some texture, dragged in the... Uh, basic water and just assigned a sunny skybox for now. Now obviously you'll want to make a far better scene than I have here but uh, this is just for testing and uh, hopefully it's a little bit more interesting for you guys to actually look at. So let's come to the hierarchy. As you can see I've created a game object of environment and that's where I've dragged and dropped the water and terrain onto. I have the FPS controller in place and the directional light. So first things first, let's come to our FPS controller. Now it does not matter if you're using a first person controller or a third person controller. As long as it's tagged as player, everything will work. As you know, in our script, we are looking for the game object with tag of player. We are also looking for a game object with tag of weather. So let's create that now. And we'll just create an empty game object. We'll reset the position. As you know, the position is going to be equal to the FPS controller plus the weather height. So it follows the FPS controller overhead. And this is important. It means we can make particle systems. We will we'll be making them fairly large, but we don't need to cover the entire terrain. Because if we did that, it would be very taxing and demanding on the PC trying to run the game. So this creates a little bit of an optical illusion. It will look like, for instance, it's raining everywhere, but in fact, it's just a fairly large particle system following the player overhead. So we'll come to this empty game object and we'll rename it as weather. And we'll also assign the tag of weather that we created in the last lesson. But if you haven't already done this, go ahead, click on add tab, the little plus icon, and there you can create a new tag. I've already done that, so I'll get rid of that for now. Now, what will happen is the particle systems that we create will be attached to this game object in the same way the water and terrain is attached to this one, of environment. But that will be at a later date. And the last thing we need to do is come to directional light and we can drag and drop our dynamic weather script onto it. Now we'll be creating particle systems at a later date, so you can leave these blank for now, but in the meantime, I suggest you all find audio clips for each one of the weather states and assign those in the inspector. And you will also need to set the fog color. Now, for the purposes of this series, or this tutorial series, I'm going to use quite bright colours, and that's so you guys can actually see the fog change very easily. But obviously, for your projects, you'll want to choose more natural colours. And the same goes, if I come back to the script, to the fog density. Now I've reset this at 0 0.05 now that's going to be too strong for a game but it will make it easy again for you guys to see it um, I suggest a value of 0 0.01 or 2 for your game but I'm going to use 0 0.05 just to make it easier for you guys to see so with that said, I think we'll leave this lesson here and we'll be continuing on in the next lesson. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you next time. And until then, 
Bye for now.